All right, here we go. So now I want to talk about how to do a project, and I'm basically going to divide. I'm going to pretend uh, this is a piece of paper on your desk, so I want you to lay it sideways, as we say in the country. And I want to divide it into a third and then two-thirds. So basically... Uh, the define phase. So what I'm going to explain here is the basic slides that I want from you uh, to get certified as a green belt. So you're going to take what I teach you. You're going to go find a mathematical metric that you want to improve. And then you're going to find the root cause of why it's where it is today. And then you're going to fix it. So I told you I would define Demaic in detail. In the define phase, you tell me the problem with the why. Now there's a lot more to the define phase, but this is basically the, the crib notes, you know, the, the must have. As far as slides go, each one of these will be a slide. So I just need a cover slide. It'll be anything you want. Sometimes in manufacturing, they'll show a picture of the part or it's your corporate logo or just whatever you want. All right. The next slide is going to be the business case. The next slide will be the problem and the goal. All right. Uh, you would need to do this before you can write that. So um, as an example, I keep saying the problem is that Lee is 245 and he wants to be 225. But in order of presentation, you know, you're showing this to your, your boss or a client or somebody who cares, you know, so the business case is, you know, why should I care? So I would make some argument here as to why you want to pay attention to the rest of the storyboard. Um, so I might argue that people that, you know, have a certain weight live longer, that there, we do know, for example, that every inch a man's waist size goes over 38, his risk for heart disease goes up. Uh, I'm single and this could be the reason I'm still single and this might change that. Of course, then you need to make an argument over here. There's some uh, benefit to being married, et cetera, et cetera. But that's the business case. But look at what I'm doing. The problem and goal is what I'm going to work on. But here I'm just thinking about how can I get people to pay attention to this deck uh, and, and want to be a part of my project. The next slide is operational. definition. All right. So this is where you explain what my weight is, what it is and how it's measured. Remember an operational definition contains two things, what the why is and two as measured by. So you're explaining to the audience what your definition of the why metric is. Another quick example cover slide is, um, your company, the business case is we've got seven open recs for salespeople uh, that haven't been hired yet. It's taking too long to hire them, and every salesperson can generate $100,000 in their first year, so we have $700,000 at risk. Problem, it currently takes 62 days to hire a salesperson. The goal is to get it to 32. I want to know what is the definition of days to hire, okay? So days to hire a salesperson is the time in days from when to when. Like, uh, tell me how you started the clock and how you stopped it. All right. Now, now we go to the measure phase. All right. And measure has two flows. Now, again, this is a measure phase using Excel. Uh, the measure phase, if you want the takeaway, is I don't believe you. I mean, that really is what it, what it is. There's, you know, you think of Will Ferrell in old school when he get, gets shot in the neck. And he says, you know, you're, you're crazy, man. You're crazy. I, there's no way it's taken 62 days to hire somebody. And you come to the measure phase and say, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to show you that that's the case. Now, you have a decision here. What type of data is your Y? Is your Y continuous? All right, is your Y continuous or is it discrete? Is it discrete, all right? 
So remember, continuous is height, weight, age, length, duration. It's, it's, you can decimal place it. And of course, most importantly, what we're about to do is you can get the average of it. So uh, you're going to make a histogram. Where do I put this? Histogram. You're going to get me the descriptive stats, right? So I should know the average. I should know the median. I should know the standard deviation. And of course, you're going to tell me whether or not the data is normal. Uh, because I don't know if I should use the average or the median as the baseline. So this, this is you've basically just baselined the Y, right? Next slide. You're going to get tell me how capable I am. And that's going to be your sigma or your parts per million or your percent. And I've given you a template called Sigma Calculator dot XLS. So here I'll know it takes, you know, 62 days on average to hire somebody. Here you'll tell me how good or bad I'm performing based on those numbers. And then finally, you've got a decision tree. Is my data in time order? If it is in time order, then you want to make your control chart. All right, and that would be, all right, and I sent you control chart dot XLS. And if you can find a better, that's fine. The control chart is basically looking for non-random patterns or what they call special cause variation. You're, you, when sales likes to say there's a trend, um, they don't realize that's actually a statistical term and someone needs to plug it into a software that can actually tell you there's a trend. Now as far as discrete data, good, bad, pass, fail, defects versus defective, uh, there's not a lot we can do in dis with discrete data, which is always, if you can get data continuous, do it. You know, continuous is days to hire. Discrete would be, did it take you know, over 60, yes or no. Well, why would you do that if you can just give me days to hire? You can see that I can do three slides instead of two. Uh, but this also is going to be DPO, DPMO, Sigma, and Yield. Basically, same thing. You're going to tell me how well, well we're performing. And that also is the Sigma Calculator dot XLS. All right, and then I don't know how to turn this off, but uh, he can go away. <laughs> um, and then the second thing you would do is the Pareto. And again, I've given you the template.xls. Because if you're talking about defects or defective, you know, I'd love to know that while we have a lot of defects, there's one, you know, that really is the thing uh, that I can go after. Now, a little bit of um, uh, information here. Uh, the methodology is called DMAIC, but it does not work that way. Uh, and only the real practitioners out there in the world know it. Um, you basically do M-D-A-I-C. So DMAIC doesn't happen. A little bit of trivia. Um, Motorola, I'll put it over here. Motorola invented MAIC. They did not invent DMAIC. GE added the D because they wanted senior leaders to come up with the Y metrics that people worked on. My problem with that being a practitioner is very rarely does the executive have the data to write the problem and goal statement. They have a guess or they might have the average, but they don't have anything about entitlement or or whether or not we have trends or et cetera. So what you end up doing, in my opinion, is you have to go out and do the measure phase first, right? You have to do the measure phase first and then see if you have a problem. See, when you come out of here, you'll know whether or not you have a problem, okay? And then if you have a problem, you go write this. So here's how I think it works. Step one, you write an operational definition. What is my why and how am I gonna measure it? Step two, you go get the data and you do the measure phase. And then step three, if there's a problem, you write the problem and goal statement. And then step four, you tell people 
that this project is worth something to the organization. Okay? So this is the roadmap. Now certainly there could be a few extra little slides in here that you insert because this is your storyboard. And remember, I call this storyboarding because you're telling a story. So one of the most common mistakes student makes is they show these graphs, particularly like the Pareto. This is literally what I see right here in a PowerPoint presentation. And I have a big question mark, like, what are you telling me? So always put some takeaway or some text um, that the audience, you know, the best storyboard is one where no one even needs to hear you talk. They can just read it and, and say, oh, great project, and not have to ask you questions, okay? So these are the basic slides I'm looking for from you when you do the define and measure phase. So again, define what's the problem, measure, prove to me the problem exists. But I believe that you do this first and this second. In the next video, I'll cover the analyze phase. So let me go ahead and figure out how to stop this thing. And then I'll talk to you again.